Hello everybody. Well, uh, it can be sometimes hard to make a tour for this map because there's just so much detail here. But what I like to do sometimes is to choose a river and then to float down that river and just discuss some of the things that we encounter along the way. So today I've chosen to do the Mississippi River, the Great River, the Big Muddy, the Old Man River, the one that flows from the north woods of Minnesota all the way to the Gulf of Mexico at Louisiana. And this river is just so important to the geography and the culture of the United States. Uh, whether something is east or west of the Mississippi is, is a very common measure used, so it seemed like a good one to start with. Let's get into it. The Mississippi starts right up here. This is Lake Itasca, although I must admit it's its shape is a bit different in real life, but anyway. And up here you can wade through this thing. And as you can begin the journey, you'll straight away notice this big wolf. Um, just to sort of symbolize how wild the state of Minnesota really is up north. This is an apex predator of the boreal forest. And here, these are the Hegman Lake pictographs, uh, a person and a moose. And I really like pictographs and petroglyphs. They're all across the map. I never make them up. They're all real. Because they're kind of like the first human touch on the land. And so from pictographs all the way to skyscrapers, you get this, this full span of human presence, which I really like. This is an iron mine in the uh, fabled Misabi Iron Range, where Bob Dylan is from. Um, often I use the periodic table element just to symbolize what's being mined there, so Fe for iron. That is the far western edge of Lake Superior with a, with a lighthouse and Duluth, Minnesota. Over here, this is a walleye, the state fish, and a fish hook because fishing is very important to the um, culture of Minnesota. As is the loon, the state bird, which you can see over here. Now we continue the journey down. We're almost in the Twin Cities. This is a Honeycrisp apple, which is a delicious apple developed by the University of Minnesota. And in the Twin Cities now, we've got the state capital, St. Paul, hence the flag, and the largest city, Minneapolis. And this is the US Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I originally drew the old Hubert Humphrey Stadium here, but was informed that this uh, was actually demolished and replaced some years ago. So I just scratch it off and, and redraw that. Uh, make sure that your skyline pictures are recent. We get down here into the Driftless area now, a surprisingly hilly region, probably, probably the most interesting topography in the Midwest. Um, it escaped the uh, glaciation of the last ice age, so it, it was not flattened out like much of the rest of the area. And it's pretty beautiful there. I actually canoed down the Wisconsin River around about here uh, a couple of years ago, and it was awesome. Uh, over here, this is the Effigy Mounds National Monument in Iowa, uh, where there are earthen mounds built by the original Native Americans of the area, and they're shaped like bears and birds and other animals. Um, and this is a baseball at the Field of Dreams baseball field, <laughs> the Kevin Costner movie, uh, which is a pretty big landmark in that little corner of Iowa. And as we continue down here, we'll just have to check out Chicago for a second because it's just over there on Lake Michigan. Chicago is the third largest city in the United States, uh, the metropolis of the Midwest, and it has one of the world's great skylines. We've got the Wrigley Field, we've got the Bean, we've got the Chicago Theater, we've got the Chicago Flag, and a bit of a, a nod to the culture here, a bit of sports and a bit of music. This is, of course, Michael Jordan's number 23 shirt from the Chicago Bulls. I grew up in New Zealand in the 90s, and as a little kid in New Zealand back then, Michael Jordan was probably the coolest person in the world. And uh, yeah, I think for a lot of people around the world, he really did put Chicago on the map. Although, of course, there's much more to the city than Michael Jordan, but he's, he's certainly worth a nod. And this is Muddy Waters Fender Telecaster. Chicago blues is, is a critical style of, of American blues. And it is playing, Baby, don't you want to go? From that land of California to my sweet home, Chicago. Back to the river now. 
back to the great Mississippi. This is Mark Twain's boyhood home in Hannibal, Missouri. And this town was inspiration for one of the towns in uh, Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer. Uh, This is the state bird of Missouri, the bluebird. And over here in um, Illinois, this very dramatic bald eagle is matching the pose on the state flag, which you can see flying above the state house in Springfield. And this is Abraham Lincoln's uh, house with the Lincoln hat, which is a pretty obvious giveaway. And uh, look, if you've been to Illinois, he's on the license plate. It's the land of Lincoln is is the motto. And um, although he was actually born in Kentucky, and you can see his hat over here. Now to St. Louis, and this is where the great Missouri River meets the Mississippi. Now, while the Mississippi is usually billed as the continent's longest river, it's actually the Mississippi-Missouri together, because the Missouri is much longer than the than the main stem that we've just explored. Uh, I mean, it's massive. All the way up here, the source of the Missouri is in the Yellowstone region, so you know, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. And it drains this vast portion of the Great Plains, uh, including even a tiny bit of Canada in here with the Frenchmen and the Milk Rivers. Uh, so it's pretty amazing to think that a little margin of Canada actually drains into the Gulf of Mexico, but it is so. Back now to St. Louis. Just to the west of the river is the Ozark Plateau, and the Missouri portion. And the Ozarks are the largest region of highlands between the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains in the U.S., now, the highest point is not even 2,800 feet, so we're not talking about the Andes here, <laughs> but it's still a pretty remarkable area, and it's very pretty. Um, this is the Clifty Creek Arch, one of many beautiful natural bridges in the plateau. You'll spot a fiddle to sort of the, the Ozark folk music. There's some wine up here. Every time you see grapes on this map, you are in wine country. The Missouri Lead Belt is down here, so a bit of lead mining. We've got the Branson Railway. We've got uh, a family of Ozark long-eared bats, which are endemic to the region, and also very handy symbols of all the countless caves that riddle the plateau. Going back to the river now, the other great tributary of the Mississippi, the Ohio, it meets the river at Cairo, Illinois, right here. And uh, here's another American icon for you, Superman. There's a statue of him at the little town of Metropolis, Illinois, right there. And these are the Garden of the Gods, a little rocky area in the Shawnee National Forest. So it's not just Colorado Springs, Illinois has a Garden of the Gods too. Now this is the far western portion of Kentucky, and between the Cumberland River and the Tennessee River is a little parcel of land called the Land Between the Lakes, which is... uh, I think a really well-named place (laughs) and it's also home to the largest herd of bison east of the Mississippi River. Um, So we've got a bison here although I must say it's not the most elegantly drawn bison on the map. He's got a bit of a humpback going on but well you know life is hard. uh, We're all just trying. This this bison is is trying to. And um, There is a giant Eiffel Tower replica in Paris, Tennessee, um, which, by the way, is one of four Eiffel Towers on this map. Uh, See if you can find the other three. The only clue I'll give you is that one of them's in Mexico and then two of them, two of the others are in the US. Go past some soybeans and some cotton here. We'll go check out northern Arkansas for a second. It's very mountainous, still in the Ozarks. And um, this is a Razorback pig, now a wild pig, uh, which is the mascot of college athletics from the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. Now, when a state doesn't have any major league teams like Arkansas, uh, college sports become profoundly important. I mean, they're important anyway, everywhere, but they're even more so. Uh, So a Razorback pig was basically a no-brainer for Arkansas go over here. Uh, This is a catfish. There's a lot of catfish farming in this area. And 
when I can't put a freshwater fish actually in a lake, um, I just do a little blue halo around it in pencil because, well, you don't want the fish to look like they're flying above the trees or anything like that. We come across the river on the Mississippi is Memphis, Tennessee, one of the world's great musical cities. From rock and roll to blues to soul to southern hip hop, Memphis has always been this epic uh, counterpoint, excuse the pun, uh, to Nashville, the country and western of, of Nashville. I've just got a, a spinning record and the giant Les Paul, which adorns the awnings of the world famous Sun Studio in Memphis. From here, we start getting into Mississippi State, past, past this harmonica here, and this region we're centered on is the Mississippi Delta. Uh, not to be confused with the actual Mississippi River Delta, where it meets the ocean, where we're going to get to. Um, no, the Delta is actually pretty far inland, and it's this vast alluvial floodplain with endless meandering little rivers that are like little Mississippis all across it. Um, it's traversed by the very famous Highway 61. And the Delta has one of the most important musical legacies of any region on Earth. Here, out of the Delta, is one of the birthplaces of American blues and rock and roll. Uh, so I've just got Robert Johnson's guitar near the crossroads at Clarksdale, Mississippi, where he supposedly sold his soul to the devil, which is a pretty cool story, but um, I would say he was just a musical genius who practiced his ass off because talent isn't worth a lot if you don't use it and he definitely used his in his short life i mean if you haven't listened to robert johnson you very much should he's very important music and another american musical legend is elvis presley this is his hometown in tupelo mississippi you can see him crooning here on the statue and his little guitar sculptures all over town um, this is the lyceum building at uh, Ole miss the university and we'll go back over to the west side of the Mississippi now. Still in Arkansas, we've got a giant raccoon, <laughs> a Texarkana, which is a town split half between Texas and Arkansas. And they've got these nice little mini maps uh, on a sign that's outside the post office, lined up with the state border, which I quite like. And now we go into Louisiana, the final state of the Mississippi River. Between Shreveport and Monroe, you will notice this hill. This is Driscoll Mountain. At 535 feet above sea level, it is the highest point in Louisiana. Um, now, it's not this dramatic, and coming from New Zealand, I, I wouldn't call it a mountain, <laughs> but within the bayous of, of Louisiana, this thing might as well be Denali. And you'll notice it gets very heavily wooded down in this region. And some of the foliage I like to use include uh, the bald cypress, um, which are the iconic sort of wide rooted trees that, that come out of the water of the bayou. Uh, so I've got a lot of them. And the other one is the Spanish moss, which you can see here and you can see here at uh, Natchitoches, Louisiana. And the Spanish moss is the weepy, sleepy epiphyte of the South that you see everywhere. And if you're visiting the South for the first time, they're just one of the most noteworthy things. I think they're really beautiful. Also quite hard to draw. Uh, they can look like scary spiderweb trees if you're not careful, but uh, that's what that is anyway. And just across here, the, the Mississippi gets very meandering now, very tough for the hand-drawn cartographers. This is a Mississippi paddle steamer. You know, I remember when I was first in the US almost a decade ago, and I was standing on the banks of, of the big river, and I saw one of these steamers sort of cruise past, and there was live jazz wafting from the decks, and the river was so wide, you could barely see across, and, and the air was still and hot, and I just knew I was in the south. You know, I'd only just been over in the Sierra Nevada, California, uh, then Manhattan, then Miami, and to be now in this very new and distinctive scene, look, as a Kiwi, I just felt this real wonder at the variety uh, and the scale of the United States. And I still feel that. So we're getting near to the river's end now. Here's Baton Rouge, the state capital of Louisiana. We'll just pop over to uh, Cajun country for a second. Acadiana. We've got Lafayette with the Acadian flag, uh, Lake Charles. 
some of the staples of their amazing cuisine like crawfish and corn and chili with some oil and the brown pelican is the uh, state bird of louisiana very very well-known symbol and finally we get to new orleans louisiana I actually spent a a couple of months here on and off in 2011 and 12 and it made a huge impression on me because it's it's unlike anywhere in the US and and really anywhere in the world and I would spend every single night wandering the French Quarter, the Bywater, uh, Frenchman Street, bar hopping um, while experiencing the most amazing music of my life and every night I'd be out drinking with locals and making new friends in these hazy smoky bars like the Apple Barrel, Cafe Negril, the Spotted Cat And New Orleans is a city with many layers. Actually, the supernatural enthusiasts say it's the most haunted city in America, although some say that's Savannah, Georgia. Um, But there certainly is a a spookiness there, whether it's in the history or the buildings uh, or the voodoo. This is the final tiny stretch of it. You know, the Mississippi is so powerful. There's so much sediment uh, that it pushes really far out into the Gulf of Mexico to the Bird's Foot Delta here. And that is where the river becomes the ocean at the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but you, know, you can see in the bathymetry here, there's uh, the continental shelf drops off pretty quickly. There's a submarine canyon uh, just to the southwest. There's a few steps down here, and then you meet the great abyssal plain of the Gulf of Mexico. There's a lot of oil, a lot of fishing. I'll just give you one more little bonus thing here, actually. Um, this is one of my favorite animals on the whole map. This is a big fin squid which uh, was filmed off a deep sea oil rig some years ago and this thing is just so creepy so alien so mysterious and you can youtube it a uh, big fin squid should get you there and that is the end of the tour my friends thank you for joining me on that i hope you've enjoyed it do like it and subscribe and leave a comment And also, if you've got any requests or ideas of the next tour, let me know in a comment below because it doesn't just have to be a river. I was thinking of doing the Rocky Mountains um, or it could be a theme in which we bounce all across the continent. We've got all the way from the Arctic to Panama to explore, so there's plenty to see there. But that is the Mississippi River done today. And um, thank you. I will see you again.